Well, first of all, exceptionally proud of everyone in our football organization and our football family. And that starts with our players and uh, their preparation. Uh, the entire bowl practice sessions were outstanding. Uh, we had focus. Everyone talked about being a young football team and a first of many things. And uh, we were focused from the get-go when we arrived in Jacksonville. Uh, our football team was focused. And uh, I put in on the leadership of our football team starting with Kurt to my left and, and Josh to the right. And uh, they showed me something. And New Year's Eve, 11 o'clock, they were in bed. And uh, we came here for a purpose, and the purpose was to win the bowl game. And just very, very proud of them. Uh, we wanted to start fast. Uh, we thought that was critical in this game, and we did start fast. I believe we only had uh, three third downs in the entire first half, and when we're moving on offense, we're generating first downs on first and second down. So our run efficiency on first down was very, very good. I thought Josh managed the offense, and then defensively, uh, we did a great job. I thought the fourth and one stop uh, was critical to continue to maintain momentum. And uh, some big splash plays, getting off the field on third down defensively. Uh, we had some missed tackles. Uh, but I think for the most part, if you look at the bowl trends, there's been a lot of missed tackles. And I thought our players uh, did a very good job. I thought our coaches had a great game plans and moving forward. Uh, special teams, the return game, uh, really helped us in terms of our coverage team. So again, just proud of the resiliency of this football team. And I still think it's the greatest story uh, in all of college football. When you look at the youth of this football team coupled with the most difficult schedule, uh, an article came out a couple days ago that we have the, we've had the most difficult schedule in a two-span in the history of college football. And we knew that our resiliency and our perseverance would be challenged this year. And uh, it's a tribute to everyone in our football family of staying together, uh, focusing on the process, and uh, they were rewarded tonight. Butch over here, uh, Gene Fournette from the Florida Times Union. Given the over here, Coach. Okay. Given the plan that you had when you took the job, are you about where you thought you'd be with this program, or further along with this group? Well, we still have a long way to go. Uh, but I tell you what, I said this is the most. Uh, challenging year I've ever had in coaching, but the most rewarding year in coaching. And we have great character in our football program. And again, it starts with Kurt. It starts with Josh. You know, here's a, here's a football team that just finished the most successful academic semester in the history of University of Tennessee with a 2.77 team GPA this past semester. So not only are we starting to win on the field, we're starting to win off the field as well. And that's a byproduct of the character that we have. Uh, They've shown great competitive grit. Uh, we still, though, have a long way to go. Uh, but we're making progress. And we talked about building this program brick by brick. And we put another brick into the foundation today. And the, and the main thing of anything of setting a culture in place is learning how to win. And not just hoping to win, believing you're going to win, and also deserving to win. And these players, these kids, have been very deserving to win. They've been consistent in their approach all year. Never too high, never too low. We talk about consistency and performance every day in our football program. And they've done everything and more so than we've asked of them. Uh, I would say we're still uh, under construction. Rick Russo, WVLT-TV, Knoxville. Coach, what, what kind of a lift was it for your team seeing all that orange in the stadium? And oh. then describe the scene afterwards uh, when, when the game was over. Well, it started at the Vol Walk. And, uh, you know, our fans have been so supportive all year. We say we have the best fans in the country, and that was a great illustration with this bowl, bowl game. And it's, it's actually started at the hotel. Uh, the energy, I tell you, it started back in Knoxville, and we went to, when we went to Gatlinburg, and our kids can see it, and it's special to play football at the University of Tennessee, uh, but it also comes with a very high standard and a very high price. But you know, we filled the stadium in orange, and it started in the Vol Walk, and it means everything to our football program. Matt Slav in Tennessee and Butch, how do you assess the job that Derek did on Sheriff? No sacks, but it still seemed like he did more than hold his own. 
Well, he did, and uh, he's a great, great player, and I know Derek accepted the challenge, and he's one of those individuals on New Year's Eve. We went to do the bed check, and we couldn't find him, and then we found him. He was sound asleep at 10 o'clock at night, and uh, he does anything and everything uh, to try to get an edge, and, uh, you know, there's so much sacks are hard to come by, but pressuring the quarterback, impacting the quarterback could be just as big as a sack. And, uh, you know, obviously Kurt and Derek feed off of each other, but also we got some push inside. But very, very proud of Derek. He's been injured the last couple games, but he's extremely tough. And I've said it, and I'll continue to say it. He's mature beyond years. Love him. Love everything about him. Josh, uh, Patrick Brown with the Chattanooga Times Free Press over here. Josh, out there, I guess when you accept the MVP trophy, you said this was just a start. Could you maybe expound on what you meant by that and, and kind of where this, this program is heading? Uh, coming into the season, our goal obviously was to make it to a bowl game and when we got there to win it, as we did today. So this is a start of the foundation for something big that's going on at Tennessee. It's, it's momentum that we can carry into the offseason and, and to have a winning season also as well. So it's the start of something big, a lot of momentum going into offseason to get ready for next year. And just to piggyback, we also finished. Everything in our program is about finishing. And we talked about each team has its own life expectancy. And we knew we only had today to, to live. And 118, team 118 is over with. And so we, need to fin we needed to finish. And uh, very proud of our seniors. Uh, they can have a say in building Tennessee football back. And these memories tonight will serve them for a lifetime. Kurt, Michael Spencer from WAT TV in Knoxville. We've talked so many times after games this season about how you guys needed to continue to stay the course. Was this validation of all the ups and downs you guys have had? Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> when you just said that, I um, thought about what happened in the team meeting today. I just talked to the guys and told them it's been a uh, roller coaster of a season. Um, a lot of injuries, a lot of adversity came about. But um, I think that brought us a lot closer together, and our youth um, stepped up and matured a lot. And um, I'm grateful for our te my teammates, and I, I'm, I'm just happy the way, the way we played and the way we focused on each play at a time. And came in at halftime, said, that's not good enough. Defense, we just gave up a big drive, so we need to get, get back together and play our game. So I think our team has matured a lot. Uh, Coach, I'm Mark Blumenthal, Palaka Daily News in Florida. Uh, talk about the touchdown, the, 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 the trick play and the touchdown. What was the genesis of that whole thing? Was it something that was like in the back of your mind or is it something that was already planned for that game? What, what happened with that? Well, we always have a catalog or an inventory of trick plays that we rep throughout the course of the year. And, uh, you know, we definitely wanted to run that play. And I uh, had to be on a certain hash. And uh, Mike Bajakian did a great job. He kept saying, we get the ball in this left hash, we're going to run it. And uh, it's one thing to call the play. It's another to execute it. And uh, Marlon Lane did a great job. Josh got the ball out there. Uh, Vic Wharton did a great job of the stalk and go and then finish the play. But really the unsung hero, uh, they brought a blitz off the edge. And uh, senior uh, Brendan Downs made that play. And Brendan may not show up in the stat sheets with a catch, but he was directly responsible for that touchdown. And those are the things, you know, you don't do what we've been able to do this year if you don't have great character. We have a great family environment. Our players love each other. That's the other thing that was great for me to see this bowl trip is this football team has never been together in December and into January. And to see them come together uh, and build that brotherhood, but also the accountability to each other to get their bodies, to get their minds ready to play. You know, a lot of times in sport nowadays, we live in a sports center society. Everybody sees the highlights, but they do not see the behind the scenes things. They don't see Kurt Majid in the training room at 6 a.m. working with Jason McVeigh for two hours. They don't see all the little things that add up to the big things. And so again, you don't do things by chance. You earn everything you get, and this football team earned the night. Coach, 
Buddy Pearson with the Herald Citizen Cookville. Uh, was the game plan on offense to attack the edges because of their physicality up front? Because it seemed like you ran a lot of sweeps and really, really uh, attacked the edges, I guess. Well, that's basically been a part of our offense, but we did. We wanted to get the hands really in the ball, the ball in the hands of our playmakers. And our wide receiver core has been decimated with injuries. But we wanted to make a point to get the ball in the hands of Alton Howard and Von Pearson. Uh, and sometimes, you know, Josh has options on plays, not just pass plays, but run plays where he can either deal the ball and hand it off or run the play. And I thought Josh did a great job of really managing the offense all game long. So some of those speed sweeps were him reading it and others were pre-called. But yeah, we wanted to take advantage and get the ball out on the edges and put the ball in the, in the hands of our playmakers. Uh, Rob Lewis, VolQuest.com. Coach, can you just talk about the impact of the, all the extra practices on the defensive line in particular? You look out there today and you see some young guys getting a lot of work and more than holding their own, it looked like. Well, repetitions are the key to everything. So to be able to get some young players like Demarie Mixon, Michael Sawyers, uh, get these individuals reps, Kendall Vickers, uh, we're very critical in moving forward. And we have a standard and the expectation by the way we're going to play defense at Tennessee. So every time you can get those extra reps are critical. But also not just on the practice field, but in the strength and conditioning room as well, is uh, we've had to play so many freshmen that a lot of times your strength gets set back because we don't call it a maintenance program during the season. We still expect everyone to make great gains. But you are on a different regiment, a different routine if you're redshirted as opposed to playing. So it was also a chance for those individuals to go in and re really kind of restart uh, the strength and conditioning program as well. For Coach and, and, and Josh, uh, you guys said Ben Fredrickson, Knoxville New Sentinel, um, you said you wanted to strike early. A lot of times that was with Jalen running the ball. He had a couple of big runs. I guess you said he was getting healthier headed into this game. Did you see that in him? And just what was your impression of his performance, especially early? Jalen's an individual who takes great pride in his performance. And he had that look in his eye as did our entire football team. But uh, Jalen really set the temperament of the game for us, uh, getting yards after contact, uh, finishing runs, and he just had that look in his eye of, give me the ball, coach. And he earned every yard that, that he got today. Um, and very proud of him, but he's a young man who's extremely competitive, and I'll let Josh talk more about Jalen. Oh yeah, Jalen did a great job of, of being elusive in space, of running hard, running behind his pads, and making guys mix. So it's always great to have Jalen in the backfield. And not only him, but all of the running backs did a good job today of, of, of moving the ball, of running behind their pads, and hitting holes hard. So it was great to see that production from the running back position. Butch, over here. Great Raymond Daily Thomas, is that, to follow up on that, is that the best football you've seen Heard play this year? Well, I, I will tell you this. Uh, Jalen's one of those individuals who's continued to get better and better and better. So I just think it's up to his standard and his, you know, and, and uh, what we expect from him. Uh, now this becomes a big off season. You know, these individuals compete. I walk in the locker room a couple of weeks ago and they already have a chart and there's a contest between Ethan Wolf and Jalen Hurd and a number of guys about their off season. Uh, lifting totals and what they're going to do. And these kids compete in everything that they do. But uh, Jalen is one of those individuals whose game continues to elevate week in and week out. Which Dustin DePierre, Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, as Josh mentioned, you guys kind of made it clear from the beginning that you wanted to get to a bowl game and win it this season. I guess, does the 2015 team have a sort of similar specific goal, sort of a wins and losses type concrete thing, or is it less, less I guess, specific? We always have one goal and one constant goal in our program when it comes to our performance, and it's to be a better football team each and every day. Each individual taking uh, accountability for their own self-determination, and if you improve individually, you improve collectively as a football team. So we already have uh, the offseason mapped out. Uh, we just have to continue to get better. We have to develop depth. We have to get stronger. Uh, we have to continue to recruit. But if you're a prospective student athlete and you want to be part of something special, you come to the University of Tennessee, point blank. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I just want these kids to enjoy the next couple weeks. And I think it's very important. They've been through a grind. And they had, what, three days off, three or four days off to go home, see their families. And uh, 
like I said, the, the investment that they put in this game and the leadership that was shown to make sure the sports science end of things, taking care of your bodies, not being out till one, two in the morning, being responsible to each other. And we talked about one thing to be a participant in the bowl game, but to go there to win the bowl game. And they were focused all week. So I'm gonna put all that, but there's a plan in place. Uh, and it starts obviously with depth and getting stronger as a football team. But these practices, really really helped us also the standard the expectation we've learned how to win our players expect to win now every time they step on the football field and to me a culture in anything that you do that's the starting process for anything josh and kurt can you describe the the emotions when you rolled rolled in of seeing all the fans at the ball walk and butch for you you've always said when it hits you'll know it it hit to the Tennessee fans who think it hit, was has it hit? Well, um, to see our fans and, and um, their turnout w was amazing, uh, especially walking to the stadium, just seeing all, all the thousands of fans that were here to support us in Jacksonville, far from far from Knoxville, and and then coming out for warm ups and seeing most of the stadium orange was also great. So it definitely felt like a home game for us, and we're very thankful for our great fan support. Yeah, um, <clears throat> when we pulled up, it was just it was just crazy. Um, I honestly believe we had the best fan base um, throughout college football and even pros. Um, my opinion, um, they travel they travel in a collective group, and like I said, when we pulled up, we we actually had to pass a few a lot of the fans <laughs> um, get into the ball walk because it was so many as the line was so long. But just to see everyone come out and support and to see eighty percent of the, the stadium orange and cheering the whole game and standing throughout. As, um, I'm grateful for them, and we appreciate them dearly. You know, when we win, we win together, and when we lose, we lose together. We bleed together. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget in our early stage of being here, we lost a game, and I got a text message from Peyton Manning that says, I bleed with you. And uh, first person to text, Peyton Manning. And, uh, you know, having Eric Berry back last night in the hotel and the pride of our former players, having Zach Fulton, Juwan James on our sideline, it's a pride of who we are. And our fan base has been outstanding. They've been loyal. They've been nothing but tremendous to me, my family, to this football team ever since our arrival. And uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, they were a great, great uh, they provided some advantage for us today uh, in terms of even crowd noise and just energy and excitement, and they've been that way all year, and I love our fans, and um, they should enjoy this because we win together. Not yet. You know, we'll have time to self-reflect here once we get back. Now we have to go re uh, assemble a top three, top four recruiting class, which we will. Uh, because we're building and we have something special and we have great people and these two kids uh, kind of define that. Patrick Brown with the Tennessee Times here press again. This is for Kurt and Butch. Uh, Kenny Bynum obviously came in and, and first started today. Kurt, I guess, could you kind of speak to the impact he made on the defense and, and Butch as well? What did you know? How do you think he played? Well, I think Kenny did a great job and. Um, I think it's a set standard in the linebacker room with Coach, Coach starting with Coach Jones and Coach Thig and Coach Jancic. Um, there's a standard and it's is is very it's very high. And um, it, with Jakob and Kenny, they feed off each other, they help each other, and it's it's it's, a, it's competition there. But they want what's best for the team. So you're not going to see one of them um, get down if one of them's in. They're going to help each other. And Kenny did a great job set making the call, setting the fronts, um, making checks, being real vocal. And uh, making plays, he did a great job. And I, I got a lot of support for him and Jakob. We always talk about when your opportunity presents itself, take advantage of it. And uh, Kenny did that tonight. And, you know, again, for him, his family, this will be something they'll remember forever. You know, the opportunity to come home and play in front of your, your hometown in Jacksonville and uh, to play in the Tax Slayer Bowl and then come away with a victory and ho hoist that trophy uh, is very, very special and very fitting because Kenny's an individual who's always been prepared. Uh, you know, he understands the defense, and he got his opportunity tonight, and he made the most of it. And Jakob, the same thing. Jakob's from right here in Jacksonville. And so, you know, these two individuals, when we announced we were going to the Tax Slayer Bowl, you should have seen them. And again, these memories will last a lifetime. But, you know, Jakob is one of those individuals, one year of high school football. 
and he continues to progress. So uh, very proud of those two young men. Thank you all. Thank you.